Last time I fished Warsash was the day before the first national lockdown in March 2020. I fished a strawberry field section at the mouth of River Hamble and only caught five scaldy bass. I was keen to come back and try some marks further upstream, hoping to catch some flounders but being satisfied with anything I could catch at all. In the top right hand corner is a link to that previous video. It includes a tutorial on how to make a long snood free hook clip down rig which is my normal go to rig for fishing Southampton water. I've also included that in the description below this video. Here, as you may have spotted, I'm baiting up a Sheppy rig which I've been experimenting with for a while. With these rigs I seem to be hitting more of those snatch bites you seem to get quite often fishing shallow water venues and have accounted for quite a few flatfish fishing venues in the lower Thames estuary. A tutorial on how I make these is found in one of my Isle of Grain videos, a link to that is also placed in the top right hand corner. I'm threading some locally dug ragworm onto size 3 Nordic bend hooks and tipping them with small bits of rag. This was the only bait I had with me for this session which was in an early part of November. The Sheppy rig I'm baiting up is a relatively short snood version with hook lengths of 30 centimeters. This is going to be used for fishing at long range. It's attached to 130 gram elongated and winged to garner bomb. For fishing closer in I'm going to set up a long snood flapper rig attached to a flat lead. The Sheppy rig you see here acts like a series of pulley rigs and the large oval beads help the hook lengths stand off away from the body line. I suppose it would be possible to make clip down versions of these and I'll have to try that in the future. I've arrived at the top of a second high tide so I haven't given myself that much fishing time. With my first rig baited up and ready to cast out I'll just quickly run through some of the locational details. The map shows some of the venues in the lower parts of Southampton Water and homes in on the mouth of River Hamble. I fished Hamble Point and I'm hoping to fish Hook Spit sometime in the summer. The lifeboat jetty of Maritime Academy is locally known as the Loch Ness Monster. The bay here and at Strawberry Field used to be good for flounders. The two sessions for this video however were from the Hook and Warsash Nature Reserve further upstream. I'm fishing both sides of the bay and to access this area you park in Passage Lane Car Park which is free. I've started by casting directly in front of me, but will also fish further to my right in a wider part of that bay. I'm not too bothered about missing the flood, since I always seem to do much better as the tide starts to ebb. However, because I haven't got much time, I wanted to get one rod out before I set the other one up. Both of the rods I'm using are the Karmic Zero 07 Superiors with the spliced in tips. However, I could have set up beach leisure rods since there isn't much of a tidal pull. The water is very clear which isn't ideal for flounders and I think they call this weather sunshine with showers. It is a bit windy, it's straight in my face but not enough to affect the fishing. However it is pushing those black clouds you see in the distance over into my direction. I'll be lucky if I don't get wet today. I always like to see that. I bite as I'm setting up my second rod. Nothing there this time, but I'll keep it out there and keep a closer watch on it.
All of my long snood flapper rigs are stored on large EVA winders. I've attached the rig, baited up and got the rod out. Just as the wind's picked up, the rainbow in the distance may be telling me something. Maybe it's directing me to the pot of flounders. One day I'm going to have to fish that part of the river where it narrows past this bay. What that rainbow has told me though is that there's rain nearby and here comes the first shower. Apologies for the wind noise. Although it doesn't look it, it is quite nasty with a sharp drop in temperature. The first fish comes to the middle snood on the flapper rig. Not surprisingly, it's a scaldy bass. Some might say it's better than catching whiting, but I suppose that depends on where you fish. Anyway, I'm happy to catch anything, and at least I haven't planked. The wind's also died down, which is a bit of a bonus. Left the distance rig out a little bit too long in hope that something might hook itself. 
However, I wish I hadn't done that, since all of the bait has been stripped. strike into a tap on a distance rod. At first, I didn't think I hit the bite, but I obviously had, but it's just a tiny scordy bass.
think I get a bite on a flapper rig which has been cast into that bay. But there's also paddle boarders there now. That doesn't develop, so I'll get back to casting out that distance rig. No further bites at the top of that second tide, but at least now the tide is ebbing and I am expecting some more action. Unfortunately, there's also a build up of cloud and the wind's picked up and there's a few more drops of rain. Well that felt like a better fish on, but it came off. At last, I get a decent take and something that's pulling back. The fish has kited downstream to my left and is looking to snag me in the shallow water. Best to go down to where the fish is, rather than wind it back up to where I am.
thought this was a really good fish, but it's punching well above its weight. I'm pleased to have landed this one, since it gave a really good account for itself. But the way it tore off, I was expecting it to be a much bigger fish. But it's the biggest bass I've caught so far at Warsash, so I'm quite happy with that. I packed one rod away, but carried on fishing while the tide was still dropping. There's always a chance of flounder when it's like this, but that didn't happen on this occasion. No flounders, but I ended up with eight bass seven small ones and a half decent one and I did lose two others in this session. I was back a month later but walked a little bit further to fish that bay from its other end. Here the path is on a low sea wall with a bit of a lagoon behind it. There is a small beach which gets covered up as the tide comes in. The lagoon is drained at low water by two sluices. I've walked past the first one but I've stopped just before the second. This time I've arrived before the top of the first high tide, but did give it some thought before venturing out of that car park. It was freezing cold and pouring down with rain, and I didn't really fancy it. However, the rain stopped and I decided to make the effort. This time, the wind was off my left shoulder, but a build-up of cloud behind me suggested that conditions would be pretty similar to the last time I was here. Despite all the rain, the water still wasn't that coloured. Same setup as before, a short snud shepherd rig for distance work and a long snud flapper for closer in, but I did swap that over to a long snud shepherd rig later on. A couple of bites early on, but I didn't connect with them. Then I had to move up onto that wall. It's a little bit uncomfortable here. There's not a lot of space, and I couldn't really move back, otherwise I'd be blocking that path. I did start getting bites though, so my interest was still in it. Dragging the baits is always worth a go, particularly when estuary fishing and there aren't that many snags about.
a little bit concerned about the build up of clouds now, but I'm getting plenty of little knocks, so my attention's on that. first scotty procession comes from fairly close in, casting into the channel in front of that sluice. The rain's come along, I get my jacket on and I'm into a steady run of those small bass. I'm not that comfortable fishing from the path. I notice that the beach close to the sluice has not been covered, so I move down there instead. There's a few patches of weed to my right, which I get caught up in now and again but I am still trying to cast into the channel of that sluice. The distance rod is just cast straight out in front of me. Despite the move, I'm still picking up plenty of fish on it, but some of them fall off on the way in.
I don't seem to get too many tangles with my Sheppy rigs, but occasionally your hook lengths do get wrapped round the beads and swivels, so do need to be unravelled now and again. Plenty of bites now, but I'm not striking into everything. I'm waiting for knocks, which are slightly bigger than normal. Sometimes it helps to hold a rod, so that when the next decent knock comes, you're ready to hit it. If that knock doesn't come, you can always drag your rig a little bit, and sometimes the next bite is much stronger. I do this quite a bit when fishing for small fish. It doesn't always work though. This is one way of keeping active though, and I find it's much better than just sitting around waiting for something to happen. Though my next bite came when I wasn't looking, and it's the first of several double shots of scaldy bass.
The tide has started to proceed, and as usual, bites increase. I'm getting fish on both rods, one after the other. Like the first session though, I couldn't film all of the time because of the heavy showers. Despite the weather, I'm sticking out a little bit longer just in case flounders do show. Still nothing decent to show for my efforts and despite the fact it looks like it's clearing up that's a bit deceptive because in the distance there's plenty of large dark clouds on their way. I think that was number 18. I did stay for another three quarters of an hour or so and caught a couple more. Unfortunately, the heavens opened up and with the onset of a deluge of rain, I made a hasty retreat back to the car park. I would like to fish the tide right down. Unfortunately, it got exceptionally cold and I didn't fancy getting really soaked. Even though I didn't catch anything decent, all in all, I've enjoyed this session because it was busy, active fishing. I ended up with 20 of those small, scaldy bass. There's still a couple of marks I want to fish along this stretch, so I'll definitely be back for some more, and hopefully a flounder or two may show then.